Hi everybody, this is Ms. Bufford and this is video one in our acids and bases unit and in this video we're going to be talking about what acids and bases are. Your learning goals for this building block are to be able to identify Arrhenius and Bronsted-Lowry acids and bases. So the Arrhenius theory of acids and bases describes acid and base reactions that only occur in aqueous solution. An Arrhenius acid is a compound with the ability to ionize in aqueous solution into hydrogen ions and the respective anion, depending on what the identity of that substance was. Because hydrogen ions are extremely reactive, they're going to combine with nearby water molecules to form what's called a hydronium ion, or H3O+. So let's take a look at what this, what's happening when this happens. So over here in this beaker, um, right above it, I've got a unit of HCl, or hydrochloric acid, and I'm going to dissolve that in water here. And once it dissolves, you'll see it forms the hydrogen ion and the chloride anion. And since these hydrogen ions are so reactive, it's going to react with a nearby water molecule and form a bond there and form a hydrogen, or sorry, a hydronium ion. Okay, so you can get a, another picture of what this might look like down here if you look at this picture at the bottom where it shows a hydrogen ion combining with a water molecule to form that hydronium ion down there. Um, and then I just have a few examples of substances that will dissociate in water to form these hydronium ions and an anion. Um, one important thing that I do want to say is that since we're just starting out learning about acids and bases, whether we're talking about hydrogen ions or hydrogen ion concentration or hydronium ions or hydronium ion concentrations, for now you can think about those as the same thing. Okay, so whether we're talking about hydrogen or hydronium, it's the same thing. An Arrhenius base is an ionic compound that contains the hydroxide polyatomic ion and dissociates in aqueous solution to produce hydroxide ions and a cation. And so if we take a look at the beaker over here, we'll see I have a unit of sodium hydroxide. I'm going to put that in water, and in water those dissociate into their respective ions. So I have a, a positively charged sodium ion, and then I have that hydroxide ion that makes the, that compound a base. Okay. So remember, Arrhenius bases, they just produce these hydroxide ions in solution when they dissociate. And so in the middle here, I have some examples of compounds that will dissolve in water um, or dissociate in water and produce their respective cations and then those hydroxide ions that are the telltale sign that those are Arrhenius bases. So another way we can identify um, whether something is either an Arrhenius acid or base is through some characteristics. And so we're going to start talking about characteristics of Arrhenius acids. And remember, these are solutions that have high or relatively high concentrations of hydrogen or hydronium ions. Uh, these tend to have a sour taste. You can't go around tasting every single acid because you could injure yourself or um, put something toxic in your mouth, but the ones that we can taste, like uh, for example lemons, um, would have a sour taste. Lemons contain citric acid. They tend to be corrosive to metals, so they react with metals, and in reacting with metals they release hydrogen gas, and um, that you could actually dissolve a metal if you had enough of a strong acid. They conduct electricity in aqueous solution. So remember from our last unit when we talked about electrolytes that acids are electrolytes. Um, they produce ions in solution and those ions allow electricity to flow through that solution. And then the last thing that we're gonna, last characteristic is that they turn blue litmus paper red. And so what litmus paper is, it's called an indicator. And indicators, um, some of them have color changes or undergo color changes when um, they're either in the presence of an acid or a base, and so they tell you whether something's acidic or basic. Litmus paper comes in two different colors. You can get blue litmus paper or you could get red litmus paper. If you start with a piece of blue litmus paper and you touch it to an acid, it will turn red. If you start with a piece of red litmus paper and you touch it to an acid, it's gonna stay red, it won't change. All right, so now let's talk about bases. 
So some characteristics of Arrhenius bases, and remember these are solutions that have high or relatively high concentrations of hydroxide ions. These tend to be bitter tasting, and again, you don't want to go around tasting every single base because you can injure yourself or put something toxic in your mouth. Um, but the things that tend to have a bitter taste tend to be basic in nature. Um, they have a slippery feel, so if you were to touch something that contained hydroxide ions and rub your fingers together, it would feel slippery, and the reason it's feeling slippery is because the hydroxide ions and whatever you touched are reacting with the oils in your fingers, and that produces a type of soap. Um, bases will also conduct electricity in aqueous solution, so just like acids, they are electrolytes, they produce ions in solution, and those ions will let electricity flow through that solution. And then they turn red litmus paper blue. So if we had red litmus paper, we touched it to a base, it would turn blue. And if we had blue litmus paper and we touched it to a base, it would stay blue. So it's easy to remember blue is base and red is acid. There are some limitations um, to the Arrhenius definition for acids and bases, and one of the major um, drawbacks or uh, limitations to the Arrhenius definition is that it only describes um, acids and bases in aqueous solution, so in water. Um, there are other reactions that are classified as acid-base, though, um, but they don't take place in aqueous solution, and so for these reactions, we have a broader definition to describe those reactions, and that is the Bronsted-Lowry acid-base um, definition. And so I just want to take a minute before we go on to talk more about Bronsted-Lowry acids and bases to look at this diagram, uh, and so you can see what the relationship between Arrhenius acids and bases and Bronsted-Lowry acids and bases is. Um, the Arrhenius uh, any reaction or any acid or base that's described with, by the Arrhenius definition falls within the same definition as the Bronsted-Lowry. So these are just two different theories that describe acid-base reactions, um, but Arrhenius only describes in water, and Bronsted-Lowry describes a broader range of reactions. So it's fair to say that um, Arrhenius acids are also Bronsted-Lowry acids, and, uh, but not all Bronsted-Lowry acids are Arrhenius acids. All right, so Bronsted-Lowry theory of acids and bases describes acid-base reactions that occur in solutions, but not all of these solutions have to be an aqueous solution. So that means that the solvent is not always going to be water. It could be ammonia or some kind of alcohol or some other solvent. All right, in a Bronsted-Lowry acid-base reaction, there's a transfer of protons or hydrogen ions from one chemical species to another. So a Bronsted-Lowry acid donates protons or hydrogen ions to make a conjugate base, and the Bronsted-Lowry bases accept protons or hydrogen ions to make a conjugate acid. So let's take a look at an example of this right here. So here's my overall reaction. I have ammonia reacting with water to produce the ammonium polyatomic ion and a hydroxide polyatomic ion. And what I'm going to do next is I'm going to put up the Lewis dot structures that represent this reaction. And if you'll notice, there's a little arrow pointing from this hydrogen um, to the ammonia molecule. And what that means is that water is going to be transferring one of its hydrogens to ammonia. And what I want to do is I want to use my Bronsted-Lowry acid and base definitions to label my acid and base in this reaction. And one thing that's useful to know is that my, my Bronsted-Lowry acid and my Bronsted-Lowry base are always going to be on the reactant side of a reaction, of an equation. And when I label my conjugate base and my conjugate acid, those are always going to be on the product side of an equation. Okay. So I'm going to start by labeling my acid, and, and it says up here that an acid donates protons, so it donates hydrogen ions, which means that water in this case is, is behaving like an acid. It's, it's my Bronsted-Lowry acid, so I'm going to go ahead and label that. 
So water is the bronze salary acid because it's donating hydrogen to ammonia. And then if you take a look at the arrow underneath here, it's connecting it to this hydroxide polyatomic ion. And, and this is what's left after water gets rid of that extra, or not extra hydrogen, after it loses its hydrogen. So it, it's a hydroxide group. And so hydroxide is going to be our Bronsted-Lowry conjugate base, because this is what was produced after hydrogen got rid of its, or after water got rid of its hydrogen. And we call this the conjugate base because now this polyatomic ion, hydroxide, has the ability to accept a hydrogen ion. It, it can now be a hydrogen ion acceptor, and that's the definition of a base, but it's the result of water transferring its protons, so we call it the conjugate base, okay? And so this hydroxide and this water right here, this is called a conjugate acid-base pair. So another important piece of information here is that the Bronsted-Lowry acid is always going to be paired up with the conjugate base. And the conjugate base is just what is what's left over after that acid got rid of its hydrogen. Okay? Now let's take a look at our at our ammonia here. Ammonia is being a, a hydrogen ion acceptor. Remember ammonia is this first structure at the beginning of this equation. It took that hydrogen from water, so it accepted that hydrogen, and so that's our base. And so I'm going to go ahead and label that Ammonia is my Bronsted-Lowry base because it accepted that hydrogen from water. And I'm going to follow this top arrow all the way over to the ammonium polyatomic ion. That's what resulted when it took in that hydrogen. We have now a polyatomic ion, the ammonium polyatomic ion. This is our Bronsted-Lowry conjugate acid because now this has gained the ability to donate a hydrogen ion. It has an extra hydrogen ion and it could donate that back to the hydroxide ion to produce water and ammonia if it, if, if it wanted to. Another important piece of information about Bronsted-Lowry acid-base reactions is that they are reversible. So this reaction is producing ammonium polyatomic ions and hydroxide polyatomic ions, and then it just goes right back and produces ammonia and water. So they're kind of passing that hydrogen back and forth. You can think about it like that. Um, so this right here, our conjugate acid, notice that that's paired up with the base. So the base is always going to be paired up with the conjugate acid. Okay, so remember acids and bases, they're always going to be our reactants. The conjugate acids and bases are always going to be our products. And if you can remember that the base is always paired with the conjugate acid, and the acid is always paired with the conjugate base, then I think you'll be good. And then again, this is our second conjugate acid-base pair, the ammonia and the ammonium polyatomic ion. All right? All right, so under the Bronsted-Lowry definition, Water can behave like either an acid or a base depending on what it's reacting with. And this means that water is what's called amphoteric. Okay? On the last slide, we saw um, the example of water behaving like an acid. So this pink region over here, we, we saw that. Um, but now let's take a look at an example where water is behaving like a base. So over here um, in this first picture where it's blue, I have sulfuric acid, and sulfuric acid is donating one of its hydrogens to water this time. So water is being the hydrogen ion acceptor, behaving like a base, and sulfuric acid is behaving like our Bronsted-Lowry acid by donating an extra hydrogen ion. And so water, once it accepts that hydrogen ion, becomes the hydronium polyatomic ion, and that is our conjugate acid-base pair right there. So water and the hydronium ion. And then over here, we've got the sulfuric acid, which is giving away a hydrogen ion, and then it's being left as the bisulfate ion. And that's going to be our conjugate base because now it has the ability to take a hydrogen back if it wanted to. It could be a hydrogen ion acceptor. And so that is our second um, conjugate acid-base pair. Okay? Thanks for watching Buffered Chemistry. Subscribe to my YouTube channel for more chemistry help.